Hey everybody, I'm Jen. And I'm Tammy. And they call us Woo. Welcome back everyone. Today is, you're not going to hear it on the 4th of July, but it is Independence Day for the U.S. And so uh, we had, <laughs> that's Jen's uh, fireworks sound effects in case yes. you were wondering. <laughs> not guns <laughs> it's <laughs> um so yes if it is uh people in other countries that are listening i'm sure you have seen and heard many things about independence day um generally we do a lot of barbecues and fireworks that seems to be the thing of the day um but we were in an interesting conversation about different ways to celebrate independence spiritually and we thought it would be kind of fun to talk about that so i'm gonna let jen explain some of the cool things that she used to do around fourth of july yeah so a long time ago in a land far far away um i used to live um on some acreage and i had friends who had a really hard time with all the fireworks and all the chemicals and all the things that happen on fourth of july and we were looking for ways to create community and i used to love i still love having people over to my house to have fires um usually ceremonial fires or ones for s'mores whichever i felt like on that day um but so I decided years ago that I would start celebrating spiritual independence day and I would invite a whole bunch of people over to my house. We would probably have mm, 15 to 20 people on average over to the house and we would have delicious whole foods and just celebrate. We would still have our typical 4th of July um, picnic with all of these healthy, delicious foods from the garden and from whatever people brought but we would start the day with a ceremony either around the fire or we would just sit in circle and we would share what was going on, what was on our heart for that day and what we felt like we needed to look at spiritually on that day. So we would start the day with our circle and then everybody would just go off on the land and do whatever they felt like doing. So we were right on the backwaters of the Mississippi. So we would, some people would go and sit down by the river. Some people would um, go and drum. Some people would go and meditate. Some people would do yoga. Um, some people would just hike on the land. And it was really a day of looking at what, what your beliefs were and what you felt like you had freedom to do. Because a lot of the time in this country, we look at Independence Day and we're like, oh, we're free from this, we're free from that. And there's this connotation of like breaking free. And a lot of people look at like the m military aspect of that and like mm -hmm. fighting for your freedom and fighting for. And really it's about like, what is our innate freedom? What are we, what are we allowing ourselves to do? Where mm -hmm. are we bringing ourselves into freedom spiritually is what we started looking at. Mm -hmm. And we're lucky enough in this country anyway, that we can celebrate our spirituality and we can celebrate our beliefs in whatever way we decide we want to celebrate. And so that was one of the things that we brought together when we would celebrate spiritual independence day is everybody brought their own beliefs to it. It didn't matter if my belief was different from Susie's belief or Freddie's belief or Dennis's belief, whoever was there, like it didn't matter what your beliefs were. It was a day of you allowing yourself to be you and celebrate your spirituality in the way that you wanted to. Um, I love so that. yeah, it was, it was one of my favorite events that I would do one of my favorite things. And I, I don't know why I didn't plan something for this year, but maybe next year I'll plan something here. Now that I'm down in Oklahoma, maybe I'll find something to do, but I just thought it would be a fun thing to talk about. Um, like celebrating your own spirituality and mm -hmm. figuring out like what your beliefs are and what you're feeling free to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm very curious. I know that you've had a lot of opening lately. <laughs> um, so compared to where you were two years ago or even three years ago, like where do you feel the most freedom spiritually? 
at mm. this point? I know that's a big question. <laughs> it's a really big question. It is a big question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you could even say like a year ago, because even though it feels like I have been doing this forever, because I have, you know, on a certain level, but <clears throat> it's... Um, I feel the most connected uh, spiritually and I feel the most like uh, in the space of love and light when I am um, in the, in the Akashic records, that's a big one for me. So if I'm connecting that way, um, I really enjoy creating space around that. Um, for meditating and for doing that. So sometimes, uh, sitting in nature is a big thing for me. So even just going out, um, I have a lovely balcony that we were just talking about that is just overflowing with vegetation right now. And, um, there's a beautiful tree right in, right on the other side of it. And I've always loved like tree houses. So it feels like sitting in my own little private tree house and yes. see like your own little nature show, birds and everything playing around and it's fun to be able to have your own little nature oasis in the middle of a very populated area but the area I live is also has has a lot of natural resources which is lovely so that's a big one for me I can usually find a lot of connection in nature especially if it's by myself um and that's also sometimes where I get a lot of visits from ancestors and a lot of just clarity and asking for um, guidance or just the clarity the, of the support that's already there. So I really enjoy that. Um, when I'm not outside, I like making a space with things that feel very lovely and ceremonial. So... Um, having incense or sage or something like that where you just you're already putting yourself in that headspace as you're starting to use that to clear and like call in whatever you want to call in sometimes I like listening to um, different frequencies um, like 888 or 999 frequencies I tend to really um, like those sometimes especially if I'm really like all right let me let me really get in this and and see what we're about to do um, and then just taking a moment to sit there and open up the connection because I, um, I operate by a lot of like physical feedback. That's how I get a lot of information and answers and stuff too. Um, like I can see and hear a lot of things too, but like how I know when things are really like settling into when I'm really suddenly into that space is I can feel my crown and my, um, third eye, um, very active. And yeah. I love that feeling. It's just, I'm just like, yes, we're in it now. <laughs> 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 and then it's like, it just helps to bring my whole like body and everything else into the, the space with me. So I, I like to create these little, I don't know, these little pockets of space that feels like it's, you're just being held in that love in that space. Like there's nothing else that you need to worry about other than what's happening right there. So those are probably my two favorite places to find some type of connection. Um, but there's a lot of things I love to do. I mean, if it's, um, in community with others, I really enjoy, um, ceremony and drumming and you did a lovely cacao ceremony that I really enjoyed you know there's a lot of different things that I love to do in community but those are the things that I really spaces I like to create for myself individually I guess you could hey, say so pause because the last episode or no two episodes ago you talked about you were going to be doing a fire with a community of mm -hmm. people and we talked a little bit about this before and I thought it was fascinating and I thought it was amazing the story that you told me about the people who were passers-by. Yeah. So do you want to give people a little bit of an update on what you did if you don't mind sure. sharing like the oh, ceremony no, that you did? 
because I thought it was amazing and perfect for the spiritual independence thing to talk about the the passersby in particular. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good thought too, because um, you know, as we know, um, people there's always intention when there's people around you, even if you know you're thinking like, oh, I'm gonna bother these people. They're around for a reason, and it's always fun when you get like a really clear picture about that. So. Um, the area that I am in, um, has a lot of beautiful, well, right now it doesn't have a lot of beautiful shoreline because of flooding, but that said, there's a lot of, um, riverfront like places that you can go. So, um, myself and this lovely group of woo ladies that we like to do stuff, we try to do it at least like monthly if we can get together for like meditations or other things. I just had this urge a while back where I'm like, I really want to be on a beach and have a fire and like release and maybe drum and just like howl at the moon. Like I just had this awesome feeling that I wanted to do that, which we totally ended up doing too. Um, so minus the beach part, we still got to go into this beautiful wooded area adjacent to where the beach was that has um, a fire pit. And back behind it, there's like some paths and then some like cliffs and stuff that people, you know, can kind of walk around and hang out by. So um, we went and got ourselves all set up around the fire pit. Even just that part of it was really lovely because every person, a part of the intention was release. Um, and my form of that sometimes is to write things down and throw it into the fire, whether it be something I want to want assistance with releasing or transmuting, or whether it be something that I want to bring that, that, um, intention up into the ethers. There's like different things that I might write on the paper. So as it turns out, everyone there, just like we were all were having these just like wacky things going on. So we were all clearly there for a reason too. There was even a couple of the gals that could only stay briefly, but they were still so happy that they came and participated. So the, I had my rattles, they had um, drums with them and that kind of just started happening holistically. I had started rattling around someone who um, felt I felt compelled to with some release and then like the drumming kicked in and everything. So this, um, small group of teenagers had passed us before we started drumming and you know, they didn't look us, look at us or anything. They just moved on past and went back, um, by the cliffs and we could, you know, still hear them and stuff back there, but they were just doing their own thing. And then after we started drumming and rattling, two other young men, came by and got like really into it and one of them stopped and started like dancing along with the drums and had his eyes closed and he was getting really into it and then the other young man just kind of like smiled awkwardly at us but I was walking around rattling so I was like smiling at them as I went and stuff too because it was fun to see you know it was fun to see him really get into it so they moved on and then I, they yelled back, um, that's really cool. And we're like, oh, that's cute. That's cute. So from the anyway, cover of the woods. <laughs> yeah. But it was also kind of fun too, because as we were doing this, we, we did start like vocalizing and like howling and, you know, shrieking and stuff like that. And sometimes when we'd howl, they would like howl back too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, we, we, finished that piece of it and we're still like around the fire and talking and you know just uh having a good time together and as we're getting prepared to um oh before we got prepared to leave the two young men walked by again at one point and um stopped and were like if you don't mind me asking what were you doing and so I just explained you know we're just having a good time we're releasing things drumming is just a great way to do it so it's just like a drum circle we just like to get together and do stuff like this and he was like oh that's really cool and he was talking to me about how he used to have drums and like to drum and his other you know music that he was into instruments he's made and stuff because we told him we've made some of our drums and we had just this nice little conversation with him and then his friend who had done the dancing was you know just kind of agreeing like that's really awesome so they went along their way So we wrap up the evening. We still had a fire going. So we called back to see if they wanted to enjoy the fire um, because there was still plenty of burn time. And so uh, they said yes. And they came up and one of the 
um, young women asked the same thing. Like, what were you guys doing? So I was kind of explaining it and, you know, the release piece. And she's like, yeah, that's kind of like we what we like to do there. It's just like a fun release. And like, exactly. That's what it was. And she's like, well, that was pretty cool. That was fun. And then the rest of the kids came out and they all just like were just like the nicest kids and had such a, um interesting like interaction with that. And I love it because that's always like. The, the people around you are getting something from it too and it's fun when you actually get to interact and you know that they've gotten some something from it and these kids didn't just like you know go oh my goodness those are a bunch of weird people in the middle of the woods they were just like <laughs> what are they doing ladies. you know <laughs> And yeah. it was funny because we did have like a large variety of ages too between like one of uh, one of the gals brought her daughter who's six and I'd say up to about mm, late 60s. I'm pretty yeah. sure uh, that was like the age range that we had there. So it was kind of, I'm sure, interesting for them too to be like, this is an interesting band of people <laughs> in the yeah. of the woods <laughs> yeah. that are howling and shrieking and doing <laughs> other things. But it was so, it was so good. Um, yeah. I love, I love doing those kind of things too. And as you were talking about this whole like believe how you will spiritual independence thing of it too that does make me think too that even you know the people who join me for that they have a variety of belief systems and backgrounds just because we believe in being able to do those things together doesn't necessarily mean that we all think or believe the exact same thing but it doesn't matter because yeah we're connecting at a higher level where mm -hmm. those things are they don't matter in the sense that like it doesn't change how we all get to benefit and how we all get to be together and how much spiritual support and love and growth you get from stuff like that. Yeah, well, and I think that there is something to be said for people getting together and appreciating each other's beliefs and appreciating mm -hmm. each other's experiences rather than saying this is my experience and mm -hmm. it's the only experience. And that's actually part of the reason why I wanted to do the Spiritual Independence Day to begin with is to bring people together so they could witness other people's process and they could learn and grow from each other. That mm -hmm. was part of like the original one that I did. I had people talk about the things that they wanted to do or well, we came, we came back together at the end and everybody talked about and shared what their day was like and what what process they walked through and it was it was fun to see how many people learned something from the other people about their beliefs because mm -hmm. we don't always know what what people believe or how they process things mm -hmm. or the things that they do to care for themselves we don't know that and if people share we can support each other mm -hmm. and we can help each other learn. We can help each other grow and we might have a tool that somebody else could use. Yeah. Um, I think coming to it with the intention of open mindedness, you know, like when you're coming into a space like that, that makes a huge difference too. Um, I mean, everyone's on their own path and it's really not our job to try to convince anyone to be on a different path. If something no. resonates with them, it does, you know, and yeah. <laughs> oftentimes we're put in positions where we're, we are being asked to give information that is really for their benefit and it has nothing, our, our job is not to figure out how it's going to land, you know, <laughs> Yeah. but when you come in the spaces that are open-minded like that, you really can learn a lot and yeah. For me, feeling um, the things that I've felt and just the the beauty of being able to experience like true, like un unmarred, <laughs> like universal love and being able to operate from a space where you understand that that's the basis of everything. It makes it a lot more fun to learn about stuff that other people believe too, because yeah. it does shape them in many different ways but how freaking boring would it be if we didn't get to have all these different experiences yes <laughs> yes yeah well i think i think music also brings people together 
regardless Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. what is going on behind the music. Music brings people together. It does. And drumming in particular draws people in Mm -hmm. because it is. It's the heartbeat. It's the heartbeat of Mother Earth. It's It's bringing that energy up. The bass. Like, it's just this, like, visceral reaction you get in your body and everything when you hear those drums and especially when you hear like a group of people drumming it's really interesting yeah yeah you know i I actually met one person in my life who told me that they didn't like music and to this day i am so like it really (laughs) it really just shocked me and i'm like i asked i'm like no music none and she said no it bothers her and i was like what i don't oh I wonder I've never if it's met a, anyone in my life. a sensitivity. Like I've, I I've met people who have a sensitivity to certain sounds, and so they'd rather um, they'd rather hear nothing than the sounds because the sounds are too much for them. Mm-hmm. Like internally, um, most of it's been kiddos that I worked with on the spectrum. They had a hard time with music. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was just too jarring for their system. It was too many things coming at them at once. So if it was one sound, they were okay. But if it was like drum was playing, they'd be fine. But if it was drum was playing and then all of a sudden a trumpet came in, it was like, nope. Okay. And so music could be Maybe she just didn't find the right right thing for her that was not overwhelming. I just remember, obviously it shocked me. That was years ago. And still to this day, I'm like... How do you just not like music? As do you a remember thing? who that person is? Because oh, I would absolutely. totally go back and be like, "Do you like music I, now? Have I you worked found with anything? that person. Do you like sound? <laughs> yeah. Because I wonder if it's that they don't like music, like composed music, but sound is a different thing. But sound is that still music. That person was wound very, very tightly and tended to be very like, hmm very harsh (laughs) and i always just wondered if maybe it was like an anxiety thing or like not being able to fully like get into the music i wasn't yeah but you know like you said maybe it is entirely possible in hindsight that person could have been on the, the autism spectrum yeah and was reacting to too much stuff happening at once i mean it is well, entirely possible so you you said wound too tight and it made me think of like guitar strings that are tightened too much mm-hmm. and like one little extra doing on that string could make the string snap like the guitar string snap and so it's like just that one little extra bit of sound yeah it's just like, <laughs> like i mean there's nothing wrong off with enjoying peacefulness but yeah i just never encountered anyone before that just straight up said i don't like music i'm like what yeah yeah i don't know that i ever met anybody who said they don't like music it was like just too much like maybe (laughs) oh i don't like this type of music or this is not my favorite music but yeah just straight out i don't like music like what oh interesting it it kind of made my brain explode because music it was just such a thing I didn't understand because music is such a big deal to me like I don't know I feel like it's just something like you said that generally like joins everyone together but again maybe she just hadn't been able to experience something like just drumming or something excuse me something like that so are there noises like going down a weird tantrum path tantrum no, that's not the right word. <laughs> tangent. I'm not having a ta- tangent. Yes, there we go. <laughs> that's the right word. Are there noises that you can't handle? Like, is there a sound that you really don't like? Because, like, for uh, me... People making a lot of noise when they eat. Ooh, mouth noises. Does Those it matter if they're in front of you or behind you? No. And it doesn't apply to animals. Animal mouth noises are freaking adorable. Human oh, mouth oh. noises are not okay with me. You need to come to my house and listen to my animals when they're licking themselves because it's I can't, the most awful thing. I can't explain it. I've never been bothered by animal mouth noises. 
but people mm. making like a lot of like smacky slurpy noises when they're eating is and honestly it probably is directly related to the fact that my sister had a lot of anxiety around that when we were younger and used to be like annoyed with that and i probably just fed off that that's actually in the dsm manual like that's a condition mm -hmm. where people have a hard time with mouth noises like i have several friends who have a hard time especially if somebody's behind them making mouth noises like i know mm. several people who have this interesting and yeah it doesn't seem to be like where the people are for me and it's not extreme enough where it will in most cases it's not going to make me like really angry it's more no. just like an annoyance so uh, I wouldn't say it's an extreme case because I have been around people who like it triggers them immediately. <laughs> yes. So yes. One of my childhood friends, bad. I learned very quickly not to slurp my soup. So I'm very conscious about how I eat soup now. And I, I laugh every time because I think about her because she she was always like, stop making that noise <laughs> when I was a kid. But it trained me not to be a really loud eater. Mm -hmm. And then I met somebody um, who had traveled around the world and they're like, in some places you have to make noise when you eat your soup because it's a compliment to the chef that you're enjoying it. And I was like, oh, she can never go there. <laughs> like, well, the funny thing is, as we talk about it, too, I'm like, you know, it, I, I, there's always something behind a trigger, right? And I'm like, is it mm -hmm. just, for me, is it just not feeling like I can truly, like, just not care and put it out there and, like, make whatever the heck sounds I want? I don't know. Now I'm like, yeah. hmm, I wonder. Huh. So, and some some days it doesn't bother me at all, and other days it, it bothers me more. I think it just okay. depends on, but that's kind of like with everything. I have also have like a, occasionally and very situationally, I have an issue with holes. Like, I forget what that one's called. Oh, I was um, just talking about this yesterday with a painting that I was looking at. It made me think of that. Yeah, you so it's see the very specifically <laughs> situational. I can't always tell you exactly when it's going to happen. It has to be a really specific thing for it to happen. But I know it's connected with my fear of like, like parasites or things like if it, yeah. if it seems to be like it could be something that could be invading something in, yeah. you know, like that's the thing that I think is what triggers. But that's also very situational. I could look at the same, and depends on the day. I, I could mm -hmm. look at the th one thing and be perfectly fine. And then for whatever reason, one day, I don't know if I'm just on like high alert or something. I'm like, ew, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Huh. It seems that's very funny. wrapped up in like what my general like stress level is. <laughs> I don't think you should look at the painting I was looking at yesterday. Because well, now I, I want to see it because you keep saying no, it. I had I'm that curious. response to it. And I was like, ugh. And I usually don't have that response to it, to things like that. So, but I specifically brought up people who have that, mm -hmm. like, issue with things. I forgot that's, what that's called. That's I, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. I have a hard time with the noise. Do you know those old holographic cards that I was going to say you used to get them in Cracker Jacks where you oh, like yeah. tilt them and mm -hmm. they have the picture moves and changes. Mm -hmm. They put it on cups and stuff now too. Um, the, the company TGI Fridays, they used to have a membership card that had that holographic stuff on it. Mm hmm you run your fingers over it or even like taking the um the straw cleaner on a metal straw and like doing that it makes the same noise that noise mm. oh, oh, oh. i can't do it it makes my teeth hurt and it makes me immediately want to throw up oh like it's horrible it's horrible That's i an hate intense it. reaction yes and the kids think it's hysterical um, of course. So do. we do not have holographic cards in my house, but there are certain things in the house that make that noise still. And like it will all of a sudden like certain zippers, the noise that they make is very similar. And I'm like, stop it. Stop it. Because I will immediately like cover my mouth because I know that I'm going to get a gag reflex from it. It's weird it's, really, it's funny to me and like awful to me because i i 
I have sat and tried to do the noise myself to try to get myself to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And when I was in high school, I went to England and there was this weird um, exhibit that they had. And it was like this body exhibit and they had this gigantic body that you walked into and the whole outside of it was that holographic stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had to stand in this line. It was me and my ex-boyfriend. And we had to stand in this line outside of it, walking around for like an hour. And there was children in front of us. And the whole time they were like running their fingers across it and like scratching oh, the side. No. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to throw up on somebody. This is horrible. This is oh, the most horrible no. day of my life. But like they loved it. So it's... It's interesting for me to think about it now, like looking at the sound aspect of it, because there was something in that sound that was calming and healing for them. And it could have even been the texture because I could see people liking that texture. Mm -hmm. If I find fabric or anything that has that texture, if I even like touch the top of it, I'm like, nope, nope. <laughs> like I have a reaction to it immediately. But I could see how if that's a soothing sound for them, and it's a triggering sound for me. Like there's something in there mm -hmm. that I need healing in that for mm -hmm. whatever reason. I don't know why I should look at this. But sound is one of those things that you either love it or you hate it. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, some people are, they don't care. It's like, whatever. Um, it's interesting but, how much it can connect to though. I had yeah. a recent thing. It wasn't a, around sound, but connecting um, this particular uh, things I didn't like around having um, like my mouth covered or like when I was doing this really slow breathing and meditation, I felt like I had to kind of gasp for air when yeah. I would do this certain form of breathing. And anyway, it like it, I got information about this connection to this past life thing traumatic thing that happened and I was like oh my god that makes so much sense <laughs> yeah I wouldn't have known but yeah. um but it's kind of interesting because since then I've been kind of practicing to see if I still get that same reaction it's definitely not as much as it is it used to be but yeah. there's so many yeah like you said if it's really triggering for you yeah. really soothing for others there's probably something to that right well, yeah. And I think sharing those experiences, too, might be able to help people heal. Because now that I think about those kids, like, rubbing on the outside of that exhibit thing, there's something healing in that for me to recognize that it's not a traumatic sound. It's not, it's not something I need to be afraid of or something that I need to be concerned about. Because, like, these kids were so excited to just be like... <laughs> <laughs> all over the outside of that and they loved it and so I think when we do share our experiences like that it can help everyone heal mm -hmm. yeah I'd so, agree with that yeah I love um your idea for hosting maybe a, another spiritual independence day next year it's just it's a cool thing I never heard of anyone doing that prior to talking to you about it. So I think that's a really fun way to celebrate that. Yeah. Maybe I need to make a big event. Huh. This is something to think about. Maybe I need to make a big event somewhere and we can all get together and have a spiritual independence day together. That sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I will think about that. But in the meantime, I think it would be awesome if everybody has their own spiritual independence day. It's mm -hmm. probably not going to be at 4th of July because this isn't going to come out until after <laughs> that. But um, just taking some time and like exploring mm -hmm. the freedom that you have in your spirituality and where you feel benefits you most mm -hmm. to explore. And sitting in gratitude because mm -hmm. it doesn't, although this holiday is very reflective of the U.S. and their excitement around a big event for them. It doesn't really mm -hmm. matter where you are or what your country allows or doesn't al allow as far as your spiritual um, 
connection. You can mm-hmm. create that and celebrate that and be grateful for that no matter where you are. Yep. And it's a personal thing. So it can even be your own personal little experience without mm-hmm. anybody else knowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So- well, thank you everybody for come and coming and exploring our spiritual independence day topic. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you get a little bit of space for yourself today and we will see you next week. If you want more woo, please feel free to check the links in the description. Of course, we love hearing from you. So keep letting us know all of your lovely ideas. Have a beautiful day, our wonderful woo mates.